what I've decided to do is to just pick up my bag and literally just tell you what's in it at this moment in time. This isn't how my bag always is. This is how it is at the minute. Because I don't want to sit here and not make the video simply because I just keep changing it. If anything, I can make more of these videos because I keep changing it. We'll start at the back, work his way through the front. Okay, so let's start off with the obvious thing, the bag. The bag is the Peter McKinnon slash Nomatic mashup. I wouldn't have bought it if it wasn't worth it. You end up getting slated for owning Peter McKinnon gear. Like, oh, you're just a wannabe. Like, no, the guy actually makes genuinely quality stuff and you can't help but buy it. Exactly the same thing with Polar Pro, his filters. They are just the best filters you can buy. And same with the bike pack. This thing fits everything I need in it. It's got a clothing compartment because I like to spend weekends away at the missus's. And then I also like the fact that it's waterproof without having to put a stupid, horrible bag over it. Plus, the colour of it just matches my whole colour scheme, like the tan, grey, green. Oh, yeah, love it. Uh, if you're in the UK and you want to buy this bag, I highly suggest buying it from the Moment website because you can't get it from Nomatic because they only ship in America. And if you go over to the Gomatic website, they don't have it, so... Buy it from Moment, that's the only way to get it. Okay, so the first thing in the bag is the laptop in the very back. So like I said, we're gonna work his way through to the front. So the laptop is the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro, but the base model. It's not specced up or anything like that. It's just a 2,399 pound base model 16 inch. And it is absolutely unbelievable. This laptop is it's mental. The battery life on it is crazy. The screen is ridiculously good. The main thing that blows me away, the speakers. <sighs> speakers are amazing. In my opinion, 100% worth the money. Okay, so now moving on to the main compartments of the bag, you've got the laptop flap that fits smaller laptops and iPads and tablets and things like that. In there, I keep my iPad mini. Absolutely love the iPad mini. If you've seen my iPad mini video, then you already know how much I love it. If you haven't seen that video, go watch that one. I'll put a thing up somewhere. Moving on to the mesh zippers in the back part of the bag. I keep cables, spare batteries for cameras and accessories and just things like that in there. One thing that I've recently added, and I got it for Christmas off my mum and dad, uh, was a million set, like a aftershave set, and it had a travel tube about this big. In fact, let me get it. Look at this! It's just perfect. You know when you're at a wedding and you start to smell halfway through the day? You literally just have this in your bag. It takes up no space whatsoever, and it smells great. I don't know about you, but I sweat so much when I'm filming. It is unbelievable. So being able to smell just a little bit nicer, yeah, I'll have that, yes please. Up top, we have the DJI RS2 Pro. Absolutely love how small that thing pops down compared to the original DJI Ronin S. That, oh, this is just so much nicer and I can actually fit it in the top of my bag. Sometimes I might swap that out for a drone as well. So like I say, this bag constantly changes. For now, I just have things out in the open like my monitor, Atomos Ninja 5, so I can record in uh, ProRes on the R5. Absolute lifesaver. And then just next to that, I have the RF 35mm 1.8. That's just if I wanna take some quick product photos or something like that. Absolutely love that lens for product photos. And the shallow depth of field as well. 35mm is just a really nice all arounder focal length. Just perfect to have in my bag at the minute. Although I do have my eyes on the 70 to 200. Honestly, every single time I see photos that were shot on a 70 to 200, I always regret selling mine. I was just, oh. I mean, my favorite photo I have ever taken was shot on a 70 to 200. Why would I sell that lens? Now, a couple of extra things that we just throw in next to it, odds and bits and bobs, just little aperture lights, wireless microphones and things like that. Yeah, these just get thrown in the bag wherever they fit. One of the coolest accessories that I am now going to start making is this right here. This, oh, you're gonna love this. Imagine being at a wedding, and you need to plonk the microphone on the main table when you're doing speeches. But you don't want to just lay it flat on the table because you know what people like. Some people bang the table instead of clapping and things like that and it's just, it's just irritating. And I 3D printed a little mic stand. Let me show you how this works. This can even work for monitors or anything with a cold shoe slash hot shoe mount. You just push the cold shoe into there and there you go. It just sits on your, de just sits on your desk like that. And there we go. How cool is that? And I will start making those soon because me and my brother designed those on the 3D printer and 
I've I've not gone a day without using it so far. Moving down from that, I have the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus with a dead cat shield on it. And then next to that, I have the Canon R5 with a 15 to 35 f2.8 RF lens on it. And that setup alone is just, oh, that is big boy gear right there. That is big boy gear. Now, the reason I use the Canon R5 is because I'm a hybrid shooter. I love to take photos and I love to shoot video. And this camera just does both absolutely incredibly like it's just an unbelievable camera yes it's very expensive but it's just it's just not like any other camera i might be wondering why not buy a sony personally i don't like the colors that come out of a sony camera i don't like the teal and orange look it's just not for me and then just underneath that we have the polar pro lenses i have the two to five stop uh, variable nd version two from polar pro and the gold morphic lens from Polar Pro, so you can get them nice, uh, nice flares in photos. Now the layout of the dividers inside the bag, I've left it exactly how it came, to be honest. It works for me, I've not had any issues, and if I do want to move anything, it'll probably be that top part where I do put the gimbal. I'm not overly fussed on how things get in the bag as long as they're in the bag. Now moving to the front of the bag where the clothes compartment is. Uh, I don't keep any clothes in there on the daily, but if I'm going away for a weekend or I'm staying a night over somewhere, then I will just chuck a pair of pants, toothbrush, t-shirt, socks. Easy. And it's more than big enough as well, especially with that space extender. Like, that's great. So that's more than big enough for that. And then just in front of that, we have this little zip on the front. It has a front and a back divider. I keep an air tag in there, just so I know where my bag is at all times. And if anybody does pick up my bag, it will come up on their phone saying that you have Morgan Woods' bag. Give it in bite. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go too in depth with this. I didn't want to go like majorly into specs on every single item that's in my bag, or else this video would just be like 10 hours long and that would just be no fun to make. But like I say, this setup keeps changing all the time. This is not how my bag is all the time. It changes pretty much on the weekly. If you did see anything in this video that you thought, oh, I could do with one of those, then the link will be in the description. What do you keep in your camera bag? Let me know in the comment section. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the stuff you already love to do. I will see you in the next one. Silly.